Hi, thanks for clicking on this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope you enjoy this message. of the Lord on today. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord on today? Can you feel his presence in the room? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe it's a sad thing to get into this kind of space and not encounter the presence of the Lord. Like what's, what point would we gather together? What reason would we gather together other than to encounter God? And so that's, thank you, that's the most important thing that needs to happen in here today. And I believe that each and every one of us has received a touch from the Lord. And that when we leave this place, we're never leaving here. We're not leaving here the same way we came in. But we're leaving here free. We're leaving here restored. We're leaving here delivered. We're leaving here encouraged. We're leaving here motivated. I was about to say, wait a minute, where are the motivated people in here? My God. My God. But let's not make more noise for the Super Bowl, y'all, you know? It is Super Sunday. <laughs> but let's not make more noise for Super Bowl than we will for our Father. The lady said he's the one that puts the super on our natural. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we decided to do something a bit different today. I, I, I decided I want to have my girlfriend here with me today, y'all. You know, we, we, it is that kind of love week kind of thing, you know. Even though every day is Sunday in my life and my rest in you, my Sabbath will have no end. But come on, babe, let's sit down and let's 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 share with the people. Y'all, it is that love week, and I don't know about y'all, but but I'm excited about this week. Um, and I'm excited about this week for a, a special reason. Um, for one, many of you know I travel quite often for work, and I'm always back and forth, bouncing back and forth, east to west coast, east to west coast. And so uh, today I'm, I'm repping um, the West Coast a little bit, the 49ers. I, I am not, let's not get it confused and twisted. I am not a 49ers fan. But today I will support the men of God <laughs> as they go against Kansas. But I travel back and forth quite a bit. And uh, this week it just so happened that I have to travel to L.A. again this week. And I'm like, no, it's, it's like Valentine's Day, right? I didn't want to be apart from my boo. So I decided I'm taking her with me. She going with me. We shall, we shall never be separated. <laughs> Yeah, so, so we decided that we kick off this week together uh, with you as a family. And, and we want to really, obviously, deal with relationships, right? Um, whether, whether you're married, as a matter of fact, how many in here are married, happily married? No, just make some noise. I don't want to see, no, I'm going to. Does that sound like they're happily married? We need to do that again. How many happily married people we got in the house? 
That still ain't powerful enough. We got work to do. A lot. All right. Uh, look, let, let's, let's, let's go this route. How many happily single do we have in here right now? All right. Well, let me, let me say this, single people. As you can hear, the married ones ain't all that happily. So my advice to you is to enjoy your single life. Singleness. My God. The grass ain't always greener on, on the, the other, other side. side. Huh? <laughs> Do I have any married people in the house? See, they'll get loud for that. They saying, yeah, behind us. It ain't always green. We, we got another kind in here too, babe. We, yeah. the, the, the other group that says, the hell with relationships. I don't want nothing to do with it. Look, you caught them by, you caught them by some. Y'all weren't ready for that, any? I know that's what y'all saying too. If that's you, let me hear you make some noise. Oh, they ain't want nothing right, to do with it's, the. It's a few of them. All right. That's all right. Well, praise right. God. Look, look, let me, let me, let me say this. <laughs> it doesn't matter what category you fall in. Yeah. You need relationships. Yeah. You have to. In every, every area and facet of life, right, we have relationships. Whether you're in one of these kind of relationships, you're booed up, right? Or whether you're talking about colleagues, coworkers, um, mentor, mentee, um, uh, father, son, daughter, uh, uh, dad, daughter, all whatever it is, you need relationships. You need those close friends that are going to push you. You need those close friends that are, are willing to tell you what nobody else will. Right? I mean, a lot of times, look, for, for example, um, when, when we get dressed every single week, I'm about to rat you out since we, you know, I'm about to tell on you. Yes, I'm telling. She said, I always throw under the bus. You know, she gets dressed. The woman of God here gets dressed. And she throws on two kinds of shoes. But wait a minute. She throws on two kinds of shoes. And she looks at me and says, which one? Me, I'm like, I want. That one, I think those right there, the right shoe. Woman of God comes downstairs with the left shoes on. And I'm saying, why did you ask me in the first place? Or, or she'll say, which one? And I'll tell her which one. And she'll say, you sure? Like, I, I mean, look, look. I'll ask her now, which one are you thinking? And then we'll work backwards from there. She say left. I say I agree. <laughs> agree quickly. <laughs> so, so look, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're in, you need somebody that's willing to tell you what no one else will. And if, if, if I put something on that looks crazy, I expect my wife to tell me. I expect my friend to tell me. Look, she gets on the phone and she'll call her sister's. And she'll say, DJ said, which one y'all think? And I'll hear the dialogue back and forth, and I already know I lost. Sometimes, sometimes. But, but again, you need those relationships. You need those people that are, willing to, that, that are willing to invest in your life. How many of you know that a relationship is an investment? And you only get out of it what you put in. The success of your relationships are determined based on the, the type of the level of investment you put into it. it. Even if you're talking about mentor mentee type relationship, it's only going to you're only going to get the success out of it when the mentee decides to open up and allow them in. Will allow them and give them permission to tell them the truth will give them to permission to, 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 to lead and guide them in different areas of life. And so you need relationships, right, hon? Absolutely. Amen. 
Look, look, but here's, here's what I, I, I say. In this year of better, we're declaring that this year we're going to see better in our relationships. Yes. I don't know about you, but I don't like an old, stale relationship. Let me give you an example. I just told y'all that I'm taking lady with me to L.A. Uh, I, I had this whole mental processing, period, where I said, okay, I could shift this meeting, shift that meeting, and stay home one more week and travel next week so that I'm here for, for, um, the, the, for, for Wednesday and, and, and I'm able to spend the entire day with her and take her out and all of that kind of stuff. And I thought about it, and I said, okay, where am I taking her? I can take her to this restaurant? No, I took her last. I can take her there. No, I took her last month. We date a lot. Oh, we date a lot. <laughs> we date a lot. You know, but what I realized, y'all, the thought process was I said, if I stay here, then it's really more of the same. Ooh, sir. I said, so instead of staying here and giving and doing more of the same, let's go somewhere else. Because I don't know about you, I don't like a stale relationship. Me either. Some of y'all in stale relationships right now. That's why they couldn't be I happy. I can't like me either, Pastor. Yeah, I'm married. Mm. <laughs> we gonna help y'all. But even God wants your relationships yes, better. Yes, he does. He does. I want to give you a scripture, that, and then we're going to talk about um, just the makeup, the anatomy of, of men and women, and how we think, how we operate. And it's not comprehensive, but there are key things that we think are important in every relationship. But before we do that, I want y'all to go with me to Isaiah 60. And I just want to read one verse. I want to read verse 17 from the New King James Version. We got to have the word. Here's what, the, here's what it says. It's going to be on the screen. Uh, are y'all ready? It's frozen. Oh, what version? Oh, 17. 60, chapter 60, Isaiah 60, 6, 0, verse number 17. And here's what it says. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. Instead of, instead of stones, iron. I will make your officers, my God, peace. I will make your officers peace and your magistrates righteousness. God is, is, is declaring through Isaiah that, 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 that the thing that you might be enduring right now or the, the thing you might be settling for, just consider it this way, just might be counterfeit as an example. Like, 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 like it's, it looks like gold, but it's actually bronze. God says, I want to bring gold in, instead of bronze. And, and, and he says, and, and you have iron, but, but we really want to translate that because, because iron will, 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 will over time begin to deteriorate. Iron will, 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 will change color. It will rust. It will, it will go through all of these things depending on environment. Right, right. Depending on environment, if, if, if you have iron and you're in, um, um, uh, in a wet and moisture uh, type environment, uh, the water deteriorates it. Uh, the water eventually causes it to rust, yeah. right? It's strong, but it rusts. It's strong, but it looks ugly. It's strong, but it builds contamination. But God says, I, I, I will give you, instead of those things, instead of bronze that will, that will over time rust and that over time begin to change color, I will give you gold and I will give you silver. And, and both of these components, both of these materials are, 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 are considered materials, uh, were considered materials of luxury and wealth of nations. He says, he says, you don't need swords that are made of iron. I'm going to give you, I, I let, that, let me fight the battles for oh you. God. You just enjoy the wealth of my, come on. Yeah. Enjoy the wealth of my design. Amen. Amen. 
And so, 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 so then he says in here, he says, I will, 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 will cause your officers, the things that are, the, 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 the roles that are rulers over your life to be peace. So no, your, 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 your ruler is no longer a person, but is a perspective. It's no longer a person, but it's a state of mind. It's no longer a person, but it's really a, something that's radiating from the father himself. And then he says, I'll, I'll make your, mag, uh, your magistrates will become righteousness. And, and, and I, I believe that what God wants to do in even our relationships is he wants to bring out the best in you. He wants to bring out the better in you. He wants to bring out the best version of you. Yeah. They, they real quiet. This is, <laughs> this is a, I think like I heard, I heard people say this is a Baptist church. <laughs> Y'all, y'all quiet. Let's uh, let's jump into this thing, babe. Let's 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 dive in. I want to hear what 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 you have to say about the anatomy of women, because here here's what here's what you guys need to know. When you have two people that are coming together. Right. Um, we always look for those things that are um, the same. Right. What movies you like? You like that? That's my favorite movie, too. What, what's your favorite restaurant? That's my favorite restaurant, too. Well, you like the vacation. That's why I want a vacation, too. Like, we look for all of those similarities. And in our mind, because we find those similarities, we have what's called chemistry. Or we have those things um, 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 that, that cause us to say, yeah, we, we like the same things, so we should live the same life. You're really looking over time, if you're, if you're not careful, what you're really searching for is you. Yeah. Yeah. And and I was just telling lady last night, I said, I don't, I don't want to just roll around in the bed with myself. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get married to, to marry myself. Mm-hmm. And in other words, the, your, your, your significant other or your spouse is supposed to make you better. Yeah. Uh, this is why. And, and, and I, but tell them why you said that. Why do we say that? Why did I say because that? Because we were going to bed. So we have this rule. We go to bed together. We don't go like you go to bed and uh-huh. I go to bed. We always go to bed together. Even if I'm not going to sleep, we're going to bed together. And um, he he has this thing where he cuts the light off when he get in the bed. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't say what I want to say. Well, well, well. Y'all, y'all know what I call him, right? I said, I called him a name, Mom Pam. I did. And I said... How you gonna cut the light off? So he got the house so doggone animated. I said, hey Siri, turn master bedroom lights back on. He says, no. And she didn't cut on. So I was like, babe, he's like, why do you need the light? I said, just because you're in the bed does not mean you get to cut the light off. I'm still not in there yet. Why not? We can see in the dark. So he was like, you can see in the dark. I said, no, you can see in the dark, but I'm not. He said, I can see in the dark. I said, but I'm not you. But but look at look. She says I, I might stump my toe or hit my. I say ain't nothing in here for you to hit your toe on. <laughs> A mess. But I told him I'm not him, and that was the whole point. Then then we got laughing because it was going into what we were going to talk about today. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, I'm not him. I can't see in the dark. I don't know how he see in the dark, but I can. I need some light. And, and that's that's like a running thing because yeah. a lot of times, even in the morning. So I'm a I'm a morning I'm I'm a morning person, but I don't need light in the morning. Like for me, I want to keep that whole mode that that nice smooth roll, rolling mode for as long as I can. So I keep the blinds closed. Mm-hmm. I keep the lights off. I even take a shower in the dark. A mess. I don't know how. Woman of God comes in and flips on light. She just comes through like Jesus turning over tables and turn on light. Come on. Get some light up in here. Nice stuff. Shed some light on this situation. And so now she'll come in with her with her with her uh her, her light on her cell phone. So that she can see what she's doing. But here here's here's the catch. She knows when she comes in, here, here's it, she, she knows when she comes in the bathroom and I'm in there in the shower and the lights are off, she knows why. Yeah. And so she adapts to what my preference is in that moment. We come to a middle ground. We yes. come to a middle ground. Yeah. And she knows, okay, when she, 
halfway through, all right, now it's time to flip the lights on. And she brings me up. You've been in here long enough. And, and so, so with, with, you should be awake now. I gave you your time. Amen. <laughs> so so you, you, you want, we, we often think that we have to have somebody that does everything that we do. And, and we call, we, we, we even look at, just for example, our religion. And we say, oh, uh, we got to be equally yoked. While that is um, um, accurate, that is also incomplete. You need to be equally yoked even in your purpose. You need to understand what your purpose. Look, look, look. If, if, if my purpose is, is to really be as ingrained, as, in, uh, 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 as, as invested as I am in ministry, it's not enough for my spouse to just be all right with just coming to church. Because after a while, she's going to be like, you got to go again. Like, you got to do it again. So you were just there Sunday. You mean to tell me you're going back again on Wednesday? Like, 8 o'clock? Like, Zoom, 8 o'clock? Okay, in the morning, I want to cuddle, but you, you getting up for prayer? Like, huh? Right? So it's not enough just to, to, to believe in the same God, yes. but you have to have the same drive. Yes. Yes. Because the one that has a drive is going to be bored by the one that has no drive. It's going to get frustrated by the one that has no drive. The one that, that's a go-getter, that's a worker, that's always pushing, that's always looking for the next thing to make them better. It's not going to be comfortable with the one that's consistently uh, um, 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 uh, comfortable in their same state, right. on the couch. Right. So all of these are, 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 are descriptions of individuals that are equally yoked. Yes, yes. So let's get into it. So as y'all can see, we're talking about relationships unlocked. unlocked. So I want to ask you guys a question. Women, do you know, or men actually, do you know the longing of a woman's heart? Think about it. Do you know the longing of a woman's heart? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. a man. That's a man. That's right. a man. Okay, ladies, do you know the deep questions of a man's heart? The deep down questions of a man's heart. All right. Do you know how and for what God has wired us, man and woman, in a specific way? Do you know the reason for that? Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, if you have your Bibles. Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse number 26. And for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead on. I don't think we gave them this one. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. It doesn't matter which version. Um, then God said, let us make man in what? Our image according to our likeness. Let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. So if you are a man or a woman, you have been made in the image of God. You have been made in the image of God. You are a child of God. You have been called by God. You have been chosen by God. You have been accepted by God. He has called you a co-heir of the kingdom. And so it is important that all of you know that you don't have to wait for someone to make you complete. Because it was Christ through his blood that made you complete. Somebody say, it was Christ, it was Christ through, his blood, through his blood that made me, that made complete. me complete. Our needs, our longings, and questions are answered and fulfilled by God and aided through family and friendship. I'm going to say that again. Our needs, our longings, and questions are answered and fulfilled by who? God. Your needs, your longings, and questions are answered by God yeah. and aided through family and friendships or relationships, right? So, we're, so let's unpack this a little bit. Womanhood. I'm a, we're going to start with women. 
all right? What is a woman? What is her design, right? How did God design her? So when you think about a woman, what is a woman? A woman is a crown of creation. Yeah. Some of y'all need to write that down. Uh, ladies, you need to write it down. I am a crown of creation, right? One, a woman was the last thing God created. A woman was the last thing God created because the world was not right without her. It wasn't completed until the woman arrived. Y'all will get that next week. Another definite, oh that's, God, that's so oh God. Yeah, I, I, look, I, I, gotta, I gotta say it. That's so good because a lot of times as men, we are determined to try to accomplish something on our own. Yeah. We are determined to try to accomplish something on our own. But God looked at Adam and he says that, man, it's not good that you would be alone. Right. So he created what? His Woman. help. His help me. Me. You're going ahead of us. Now, <laughs> Go ahead. but there's one thing that I want to say about, mm -hmm. about, about man. Um, what did God do in order to create help? Mm, 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 mm. He put Adam to sleep. Yeah. He said, Adam, I need you to quiet your own opinions. For I'm sorry. Go ahead. Because they, they, they're not ready. I, he says, I need you to just shh, just for one minute. Rest. Let me get you help because you don't have all the answers. My God. And sometimes, just sometimes, God will give you help, will send help your way. Yeah. But you refuse to accept it because you're too busy trying to accomplish it on your own. Your opinion gets in the way. Your pride gets in the way. I'm talking to the men. Your pride gets in the way. Your, 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 your whole perspective gets in the way. Your, 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 all, all of your habits get in the way. My God. So God says, I, I need to put you to sleep before I create your help. Yeah, yeah. Come on. That's good. Another um, definition for a woman. A woman was, is made in the image of God to reflect a part of God that man would not be able to reflect on his own. <laughs> a woman is made in the image of God to reflect a part of God that man would not be able to reflect on his own. What is her design? How does a woman reflect God's nature? I'm glad you asked. The first Part, part, the way he does that is she is designed to be a part of an adventure. Yes. Men, we were created to be a part of your adventure. Eve was made to be Adam's helpmate, right? Why? Because God saw that everything was created and that he was alone. He said, wait, Adam cannot do this alone, like Pastor just said. He needs a helpmate. Someone who would help him maintain order and take dominion on earth. So she's designed to be a part of this adventure of maintaining order and beauty and function on earth. Because y'all know women, we like order, right? When we come into their life, we should bring order. But we want to be a part of... A woman wants to be a part of the adventures of your life. She wants to be a part. So, so many times in society, we will see a man running um, and thriving, right, in his career, um, his business. He's just doing his dreams, and he's just doing his own thing, which is great. But most often, there is a disconnect between a woman and a man. Why? Because... Men don't always take the woman on that adventure with them. Wow. Men, a woman wants to be taken on it with you. They want to know what are the dreams in your heart? What are you, what are you what are your dreams? Yeah. What are the longings in your heart? What are the what vision do you have for our family? What vision do you have for your that life? Part. If you're single, what is your vision for your life? Do you want to be married? And if you want to be married, what is the vision for that? Right? 
How do you dream together? You want to dream together. Like, we want to be taking on the adventure adventure with you. I want to be a part of what God has called your life to be. Yeah. Are y'all with me on that? So Did you want to chime in? No, you got this. All right. So if you do this, if we do this well, doing this will make it easier for us to submit. Not that S word. The S word. When she's taken on the journey called life with you, she will be willing to submit. And so in a relationship where there is no trust, I want you to know it is a costly relationship. It would be costly to be in it. Because you end up paying more than it costs to stay in it. So one way of gaining trust of that woman trusting you, take her on the adventure with you. Right? It should not be a secret. It should not be shame if this is the one God has called you to love. It's going to cost you your peace if you do not take her with you. My God. Right? Say that again. It's going to cost you your peace if you do not take the woman with you. So ladies, as the man open up in those areas... You need to cover him in prayer. As he opened up to you, you need to make him a pl- make that pla- be that place of rest, yeah. right? Be that place of peace that as he opened it up to you, it's not your vision, it's his. It's not your dream, it's his dream. So if it does not match your vibes and where you're going, you should have found that out before you married him or before you said yes to the ring. Yeah. And so for those of you that are not, don't have the ring, you still have time. Figure all of that out. If he doesn't bring you in the adventure now, it's going to be harder to bring you in once you say, I do. It's quiet in the room. It's quiet. It's real quiet. So empower them and support them as they take you on the adventure with them. Here's the thing. We can't demand to be a part of his adventure if we're not willing to understand him first. So in order for you to be willing to go on that adventure, you must first be willing to understand how he's wired and designed. Right? You must be willing to understand all of that. You must know that they are, men are created differently. We just got this saying that differently than us for a reason. If you don't learn this, you would then start to control him. This is one of the reasons women start controlling or trying to control a man. Right? But what you're actually doing, sis, is pushing him further away. Yes. And he's never going to allow you in. I ain't going to say who, but some of the men stood up back there just now like, don't, don't say who. Don't say. We're not going to say who. <laughs> but, but I want to understand something. I, w- I want you to unpack that a little bit more. What, what does it mean to, to understand that? I, to give him space to share that adventure with you. So let's say he wants to be an entrepreneur, but you want him to be a pastor. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I, I'm not called to be a pastor. We had that before yeah. where a couple was, you know, they, they were a little frustrated because there were some different things, visions that they had for themselves, but they also had a vision in mind for their spouse. So you have to be careful that even in dating relationship and all those things, what the vision or the dreams that they have is their vision and their dream. Right. So as a woman, you have to be open and have an ear. That's why it takes two mature people to work in any relationship. Yeah. So if you're not mature enough to hear him out, you're not going to be mature enough to walk through the adventure with him. That's it. That's so important. So it's not going to look like what you think it should be because God didn't give you the dream. He gave it to him. So what you should be doing is listening to hear and not to respond. Come on. You should be listening to hear him. And in your mind, because we like order, you should be trying to figure out how am I going to support him through this. Right. How, how does that look to him? And if you don't know, babe, tell me, how can I support you on that? Yeah. How does that look? What do you need me to do? How can I show up and be a part of that with you? Because I want to go. That's so good. That's so good. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to it, and I'm thinking about it. There, there are times, I mean, I know that there was a period and season in my life when I really didn't know what I wanted. 
I didn't know what my dream was. I, I didn't know, you know, everything, just about half of what I am today, I said I didn't want to be. You know, and, and even 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 you've you've told me, you know, in, in, in past, I, I didn't I didn't want to I didn't want to marry a musician. I didn't want to marry a preacher and definitely not a pastor. She she got all three of them. Yes. So so there's a season and period in your life when you don't fully understand what you want. But even in that, they should be willing to wait to with wait. him. wait, and that's where I was going to yeah. go. It requires time. It requ requires grace and space. Yes. You got to give them grace and space to, mm -hmm. to really search that out, to really pray it through and cover your, your spouse in prayer while they are seeking God. Not just a spouse, in romantic relationships Every, too. Yes. If you're in a relationship, a seriously dating relationship, that's still something. If you find yourself talking to each other and they don't have that out yet, it's okay. Don't go into demanding. Right. Pray for him. Lord, give him a dream. Give him your calling. Give him strategy. Give him revelation of what you've called him to do. Don't force him to fit in a box that you got for him. That you got. Because then you're going to break him down later on down the road. It's going to be your fault because... Now he's entered into something that God never designed him to do. Right. That was your dream. That's what you told him to do. But what did God say? What did God say? Even if you see it, allow God to tell him himself. Yeah. Wait. Pray. God, if this is you, I need you to reveal that to him. Right. Yeah. That's so good. So, ladies, hear me when I say this. If you have to control someone and force them to change in order for you to love them, they are not your person. They're not your person. They're, they are just a placeholder until the person comes. All right? The second way God has designed a woman is she has a beauty to unveil. Yes. A woman yes. has a beauty to unveil. So, some women resent that word beauty. Some of them like, I don't got to be like, I don't got to be all that. Y'all know, I don't got to have all of the nails and lipstick. I don't need all of that. Anybody know some people like that, right? So they'll say things like that, that they don't need it. And I, we can get dressed up and we can do this. I could do all of this on my own. But there's a thing where they want to resent the longing of their heart. That's really what that is. It's a resentment of, for the longing of their hearts. And that is because there's been a broken, fractured heart from somewhere. So men pay attention to that. I know they come off as strong, but that's not strong. Something broke their heart. And so as a woman, we, we need you to help us unveil the beauty of our hearts. Yeah. Are y'all with me? So they could be dealing with rejection. They could be dealing with trauma. They could be dealing with hurt. And they put on this aggressive behavior of that deep longing. It's really a deep longing in their heart. Are you willing to love her through that, to unveil the beauty of her heart. Are y'all with me, ladies? Think about it, men. When they met you in your bachelor pad, right? So if you got one, mighty Lord. If not, Lord, I hope you're working on it. There are things men just don't care about. Like, ladies, when you go to the house when you're dating, you're like, Lord, he ain't got no curtains. He ain't got no rugs stop, at stop. this door. He ain't even got a comforter. He just got sheets. No pillowcase. Y'all, am I the only one? He don't got no cups. He got paper cups, paper plates. We're minimalists. <laughs> Come on. But when a man meets a woman, she brings the beauty to that environment. Yeah. Come on, y'all. A woman can bring beauty to that environment. And the same thing, if he can, if he can help her unveil that, she can bring beauty, come on, y'all, to his environment. There are things men just don't care about. But when a woman put herself, put her touches on it, it brings beauty to his world. Yes, Lord. 
All right? So that is the goal. The beauty of a woman reflects the beauty of God. To bear a child is not the only life um, a woman can give. She gives life wherever she goes. When she walks in the fullness of her feminine heart, she can bring life. Which is being, she could be devoted, um, nurturing, affectionate, courageous, and compassionate. All of those things will be revealed. And so when a woman suppresses her heart, it typically, it's typically, typically because there has been hurt or some type of trauma somewhere. There are usually, if they're bitter and not really nurturing, you know, you meet some women that are not really nurturing. They just need a healing of the heart. So men, how do we work with this woman? How do we work with the fact that women have a beauty to be unveiled? Women like to know that they're captivating. Tell us. Tell us we're beautiful. Right? They want to know that they're beautiful. Your hair is beautiful like a flock of goats. (laughs) See, that is scripture. (laughs) I know. Look at Song of Solomon 4. Yeah, they didn't know that. I'm just kidding. (laughs) But ladies, right, we want to know what you think. We want to know, okay, don't just tell me I'm beautiful. What about me is beautiful? Come on, I want, I want, we need details, right? I want to know, do I turn you on? What about me turns you on? As my husband, I need to know, what about me turns you on? Because I need to do it more often. Right? Amen. When you look at me as your wife, do you still lust after me? Oh, yes. Do you still lust after oh, yeah. oh, See, yes. some of them get, got a little quiet on that word lust. They ain't meet Dr. R.A. R. Vernon, have they? We fold the lust, <laughs> is we? Lord Jesus. Dr. R.A. Vernon say, marry what you, if you're going to, if you're going to marry her, make sure you're going to still be lusting after her. You, you like. lusted when you looked at her. But make sure that that presence, y'all, y'all all right? They, they ain't ready. It's all right. It's all right. When you look at her, do you still look at her with those things? Don't, don't just tell her, I'm, you're beautiful. What about her is beautiful? Give her the details. We want to know. Somebody say, I want to know. We want to know that our beauty is there to unveil. The more you fill her cup with unveiling, the less, uh, with unveiling that, the less someone else's compliment will matter. That, that, that. I remember I was in a um, meat market a few years ago. I was right after the pandemic or something like that. Um, <laughs> there was this man in the uh, meat market, and he was a foreigner, and um, he was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. I was like, what is, he, what is he looking at? He said, I'm, I'm looking at you. And he goes on with this eloquent of speech about me. As he talking, I'm pulling out my phone like, mm. I ain't going to lie, it was good. I had DJ on there, and I'm letting this man talk. I said, okay. And he just said, what is, I said, listen. <laughs> and the man just going, I put my oxtail order in, and I walked away. I said, you ain't never said no kind of words to me, okay? I said, that man just said some things I ain't never heard nobody say to me. Y'all got quiet again. I, he went, oh, he don't even know me. But he, I said, sir, thank you, thank you. He said, no, I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand. But I'm going to feel your order. And I was so uncomfortable, but I was dying on the inside laughing because I'm like, babe, you better get your vocabulary up because this man in here telling me some stuff I never heard you say. But I want you to know that the more we are celebrated in our femininity, the more confident we show up. The more you fill our cup, the more we'll show up in the bedroom. The more you fill our cup, the more we'll clean, we'll wash your clothes, we'll cook your dinner, and be happy about it. It won't be a chore. So we will show up in the marriage and especially in the bedroom. When you fill our cup, somebody say, fill my cup. 
and let it overflow. One more way that God designed a woman is she longs for romance, right? She long, I don't care how hard her shell is, she wants you to chase her. All right? Again, I just told you, something broke her. Something did that to her. But the fact that she said yes to you says she want you. All right? Now, you're not her fixer. I'm not saying that. But there are some situations where we're already married and we, we didn't know how to unlock her. Right? So we didn't do the work before we got there. And so most women are, are, uh, are hopeless romantics. Right? Any hopeless romantics in here? Am I the only one? See, most of us are. Oh, look, doc, the doctor said, she said, I am. I am. Me too, girl. Right? Why? Because we're wired that way. There's nothing wrong with us being a hopeless romantic. That is the way God wired us, right? When we look at romance movie, we're saying, OMG, he's so romantic, boo babe. Did you see that? Oh, my God. She's sending signals to you. Yep. Right? What she's really saying is, wow, look at how he's pursuing her heart. So women want you to pursue her. What is romance? Romance is about pursuing the heart. We were created and wired to be pursued. A woman wants to feel loved and fought for. I'm going to say that again. A woman wants to feel loved and fought for. She wants to feel that you got her back. She wants to know that she is enough so she don't have to seek validation from someone else. And so not only that, but God pursues us too. And God also wants us to be pursued. He says so many times, seek me. He says, run after me with all your heart. He said, bring your offerings to me. He says, sing to me a new song. That is romance. That's it. That's it. Ladies like date nights. How many ladies love date nights? Whether you're single, married, anybody like date nights? How many men like date nights? Let me see it. Oh, God. They slow. You like Sean? You like date nights? Okay, I see you. He said, I like date nights. What, what, what's up? I see you, brother. He said, I love date he nights. Said, I need to make sure you saw my hand now. <laughs> Ladies, I need you right, to bro. always be his girlfriend. Men, I need you to always be her boyfriend. That's right. You know, I, can, I, can I say something? Yeah. Here, babe? Um, your dad told me back when we were dating, um, just, just after I asked for his permission to, yeah. to, to propose to you, he said, he looked at everything that I was doing, and he says, whatever you're doing to get her, you're going to have to keep up to keep her. Yeah. And so we, we were dating, like, every, every Friday night, y'all, I would go home. After work, I get off work. I'm going, I'm washing the car. I'm shining. I'm looking at everything. I got it smelling all good. I go in the house and I shower because we going out every Friday. Yeah, and he still do that today. He washing the car and everything like, <laughs> like we of- were dating. Y'all clapping a little weak, but all right. But whatever you do to get them, we have to do to keep them. Yeah. And don't just keep doing the same thing. Yeah. Because nobody wants a stale relationship. Change it up. You got to change it up. Mm-hmm. And be open to do things that you may not want to do, yeah. but your, your spouse or your significant other may want to do it. Be willing to get in their world. Right. So always be her boyfriend. Even if a woman um, let you know first that she likes you, men, she still wants you to pursue her. I pursued him before he pursued me. Did y'all know that? Mighty God. I pursued him. I wasn't aggressive. I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't overly uh, being seen or wanting to be seen. I just simply walked them to him and said, hey, I'm LaFrida. I just simply wanted to know, do you have a girlfriend? That's it. Are you dating someone? And, and like, he uh, was speechless. Uh, he was like, uh. 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 Where's Sharice at? Straight up no chaser. Where's she at? Where's Sharice? Uh, Sharice, Sharice. She on, okay. Sharice, you at home watching, right? Listen, I went to him and I asked him, but after that, he then pursued me. Yes. I knew I was a wife when I asked him. 
that. He wasn't going to make me a wife. I was all, see, some of y'all putting up there, make me your wife, put a ring on it. I'm already a wife. <laughs> and ladies, sometimes our problem is we come off nasty. Our demeanor is, we don't smile. And because we're broken at heart, we come off as this aggressive woman. Men don't like, always like that. And the ones who tell you they do, they lying because they only want one thing. They want you to be aggressive in the bed. So they're like, yeah, bring that. Because I'm going to break that down in another way. Oh, Jesus. Men, am I right or wrong? Y'all don't want no aggressive woman. Right. Right. And the ones who say that, I'm telling you, they just want to play with you. Ooh, I like that. You a little feisty thing. <laughs> yes. Don't be fooled. Don't be El Cheapo. Oh my God. That means you cheap and you don't know your worth. I don't care if you like this little feisty thing. I need you to see past that. All right? And so, ladies, we got to make sure that sometimes we, we, we may make the first move, but allow him to pursue you. You're already a wife. I like the way I heard someone say the other day that um, in the Old Testament, um, that weddings, at the weddings, the bride was waiting for the groom to come down the aisle. Right. Not the groom waiting for the bride to come down the aisle. So in the Old Testament, that's the way they got married. The groom was wait, um, the bride was waiting for the groom. Just like the church, the bride is waiting for the groom to come back. What? The bride was already the bride before the groom came. And so before you get a ring, you got to know, he said, he that findeth a wife. You're already a wife before he finds you. And if you can't be a good bride to the groom, you will never be a good bride to a man. I ain't getting a lot of amens. I'm done. So, ladies, y'all make room to allow these men to be able to see the beauty of who you are and care for what the Lord has put inside of you. Yeah, that's so good. Can you, get, can you clap it up for that if that was helpful, ladies? And men, if that was helpful for you. Was that okay, men? All right. <laughs> now, I want to talk quickly about the men. We, we spent a good, good amount of time on the ladies, and I'm going to give some time to the men because I think it's important. Y'all want to hear this, ladies? Yes, we want to hear. Y'all want to hear this, men? Yeah. And so so here, here, here's the anatomy of a better man, right? Uh, just like lady said, just as she said from the beginning, men even are framed in the image of a father. Yes. We are framed in the image of the Father. And so what that also means is that we are already, we were created with wealth. Absolutely. We were created not only with wealth, but just worth. Yeah. You have to understand, men, we have egos. Right? Oh, y'all going to leave me out here? <laughs> I'm going to tell the truth. Men, we have egos. And, and, and look, and, 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 and that's, that's, that's all right, but here's the thing. When it's flexing too much, that's an indication that you don't know your worth. When you need, when you need somebody to fill your cup every single moment, when your cup is never full, right? what if it's a big cup? No. <laughs> look, when God created, when God created man, how many of you know that anything that God creates, he never creates it inadequate? Right. There is no inadequacy in you. Right. And so even when you're, when, you, when you're showing up, you're showing up complete. Yes. You might be fractured. You might be damaged uh, through life circumstances. But all you need to do is find your completeness because it's all you were designed to be complete. Yes. And so, so there's no inadequacy in you. And so it's really an indication that, that, that you don't understand your worth when you always need someone to stroke your ego. Right. right. Uh, it's, in, it's an indication of low self-esteem. Right. And so we have to, we, it's also an indication that we don't fully understand our purpose. Right. Look. Every, every man wants to hear it. Every, every man wants to hear it. I know I want to hear from my wife. Uh, if I look good, tell me I look good. Absolutely. 
right? If I'm doing things right, I need you to let me know I'm doing things right. If I'm if I cleaned up the way you needed me to clean up, I need you to say that. I need you to, if I took on my own and said, you know what? I'm going to make sure this thing is beautiful and smelling like sunshine and roses when my wife comes in. I'm going to sit there waiting for you to say something. <laughs> That's true. They want to know that we saw their effort, you ladies. Because, because look, Men are, are, are naturally um, wired in a way to where we want to fix things. Yes. Right? And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. We naturally want to fix things, and then we want to be acknowledged for what we did. Absolutely. We want to be acknowledged for what we fixed. And, and it's important, women, for you to actually do that. It's, in, it's important for you to, to verbalize how you feel about that, that man. Yes. And, and here's what Song of Solomon says. It says, uh, your lips, oh, my spouse, my God. drips as honey. Mm. Honey and milk are under your tongue. Mm -hmm. So the more you actually talk yes. and give me that honey, the more I'm motivated. The sweeter to, it gets. Come on. The more I'm motivated, the more I'm encouraged, yeah. I'm going to get up and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work my, I'm going to work my fingers to the bone. Because I know that at the end, my wife is going to be happy about what I did. And so we have to keep that in mind. Yeah, men have an ego, and there's, there's, it's important for us to communicate to them how we feel about what they, what they do. Yeah. The other thing is when uh, most, most, we have to acknowledge the fact that most often men, um, many men don't have a strong father figure or never knew their father. And so, so sometimes we're, we're, we're not only looking for our wives or our friends or our, our significant others to tell us how, where our value is. A, a lot of times we're looking for that to be fulfilled because our father never did. Yeah. Because, because our father never told us, son, you did a good job. Son, I'm proud of you. Son, keep working at it. Son, you didn't hit it this time. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't hit the mark this time, but keep on going. I know you're going to get it the next time. I'm right here beside you. Sometimes a man wants to hear his wife say, I'm right here beside you. Come rain, come shine. If you lost your job, I ain't going nowhere. If you got a new job, I ain't going nowhere. If you want to move, I'm right here with you. If you want to stay, I'm right here with you. We want to hear you say it. Because that encourages us to know that we're going the right direction. No. And that you're really with us. You said no jobs and stuff like that. That's married. Oh, I'm, I'm going. I'm going to get to that. I'm, I'm, All I ain't right. Gonna, I ain't gonna let that let that slide now. So we, we, mm. I ain't gonna let that slide. All right. So, so <laughs> look. So, so <laughs> let me move on so I can get to that. We gotta make it clear because some of them settling and we need them to come out. Oh no, yeah. We we gonna get to that. So so so. Even though, men, we're created in the image of the father, a lot of times when our father was present but not present or absent and never, never, we never met them, we don't know what that model of a good father is. Right. And so it not only impacts our relationships with our wives, but it also impacts our relationship with our children. Because our fathers were, were absent, how does, what does it mean to be a good father? Right. Uh, growing up, me and my dad, my dad was present in my life, but my dad and I never had we, we didn't have a strong and, and healthy relationship until much later in life. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up uh, in many ways. I entered into even um, building my own family with with an opinion that I don't want to be what my father was. Yeah. Right. And so so what 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 I'm what I'm sharing with you is that there was a moment where I was I was hurt. I was wounded. Right. And so so she she could have she could have said, no, you got you got too many daddy issues. I can't deal with you. Yeah. But sometimes you just need to give them grace and space. Mm -hmm. If you give them grace and yeah. space, they'll show you what they can do. Yeah. If you encourage them, you'll show, they'll show you what they can do. Now, now I, didn't, I didn't fully understand it back then, but even as I got older, I understood it. I did this. I remember Remember, we were in um, um, Florida, and we were on vacation. I had done this Ancestry.com, right? And I had gone through to find out all of my, my family because I never met my grandfather on my dad's side. I never, like, never laid eyes on him. I don't even know how he looked. But, but I found um, Ancestry.com showed me a, a certificate that he was in the war. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is, this is my grandfather. So I took the picture and I, 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 I screenshot it and I sent it to my dad. 
And I said, Dad, did you know that, that Granddad was, was, was in the war? He called me in tears because he never met his father. Here I am saying that my father is not a good father, but he's doing the best that he could because yes. he didn't know what a good father was. Right, right. So we just need that time to remain, but it, it, it unlocks some things in me. So now it gave me understanding and placement, and it allows, allowed me to open up a new room of grace for my father. That's, wait, that's good. Because there's some people in this room who have similar relationships. Yeah. They may not have good relationships with their father, but did you consider the, their, that, that their father, they may not know him, they may not have been in their lives, they may have died before they um, ever, uh, when they were born, uh, bef uh, you know, after they were born, and so they don't have that uh, structure in their lives. So can you take a moment right here in this moment and give your dad grace? Yeah. I know he didn't show up for you. I know he hasn't been consistent in your life. Some of you may not know him, but some of you do know him. And it's, you've been living at a, in a place of deficit because of it. And so today, can you take a moment and free him from that and understand that he just did not have the blueprint? Right. He didn't have the blueprint to be all that he could be. Can you give him grace? The same grace and mercy that God has towards us and forgive him. I promise once you do that, you're going to feel so much weight just fall off of you. To forgive him for something he don't even know. Right. Some of them don't even recognize that's the reason they can't show up. Some of them don't even recognize, hey, I feel this void I don't know why I, I want to be there for my baby girl. I want to be there for my son. I don't know why I can't move. I, I don't know why I can't put one foot in front of the other. They just don't know. So can you do that today? Forgive them. Give them grace. Give them grace. I'm sorry I felt something one that. I remember like it was yesterday when I felt that shit, when things unlocked in my life and I was able to drop the weight because I was trying to hold my father to a standard that I only saw in Hollywood. That's good. I was trying to hold him to a standard that he didn't fully understand. Right. That he had never experienced. And even now, I realize as I go through life that he deposited so much more than, I, than, than Hollywood ever could have. Like there are things that I do, there, there, are, there, are, um, there are regiments, there are, there's a standard of living that I have that I never would have had he not raised me even the way he did. And it's all working to our benefit. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter how difficult it is. It's going to work to your benefit. The other thing that I want to tell you about men is that men are stewards of sonship. Yes. Men are stewards of sonship. We are, not only do we have the value uh, that's given from the father, but we also have the responsibility to emulate the father. If we don't emulate the Father well, and I'm talking about God, our Father. If we don't emulate the Father well, we're not giving the bride anything to submit to. You see, you see, um, uh, women, women have to submit. But when you think about it, men, we have an even greater burden because it says, give them your life. It says, women, submit to your husbands as, as into the Lord. But then it tells, uh, it says, husbands, submit to your bride, to your wife, the way that Christ has submitted to the church. Wow. Love your wives, I'm sorry. Love your wives the way that Christ loved the church and gave his life for her. Yes. Wives, submit. Husband, give your life. Wow. 
So it's an even greater mandate that we emulate the Father because when we emulate the Father, it's indicative. It, 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 it speaks a different language to your spouse. Yeah. It speaks a different language to your significant other. And those that are even on the fence wondering, they're seeing the fruit of God in your life. And even when they don't fully understand God and haven't developed in that way, you your, your fruit draws them in. My God. The other thing is men are always in pursuit of peace. That's a word, ladies. Men, I need y'all to help me in here with this one. Men are always in pursuit of peace. The, quick, the, the quickest way to get rid of a man is to rob him of peace. Here's what the scripture says in Proverbs 21 and 9. It says, better to live on a corner of the roof than to dwell in a house with a quarrelsome wife. Yes. The quickest way to get the man out of your house is to be quarrelsome. Yes. It's to always be coming in hot. Proverbs 21 and 19 says, better to live in a desert My God. than with a quarrelsome and nagging wife. Because a man is always in pursuit of peace. Yes. Yeah. They're always in pursuit of peace. Number four, men uh, are, are individuals of work and determination. Now I'm coming back to what you were saying. You, wait, wait, you said, wait a minute. Wait, you, what do you mean no job? That's right. You got, they got to work. Yeah. Or have something coming in. True, but life happens. And if yeah, life does. happens and they lose their job, they, 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 need to, they need to bounce back. Yeah, but what if and, they don't? Oh, they're going to bounce back because that's what a man does. Oh. Y'all heard that? That's what a real man and, does. And look, and look, you got to give him grace yes. and space. If you don't give him grace and space when he bounce back, you just might wish you had given him the grace and the space. My Lord. Here, here, here's what it says. And, and, and look, I, I don't want to discredit. We do have some lazy ones. Oh, yes. We have some lazy ones. But before we get there, here, here's why I know that the man will bounce back. Here's how I know. Um, Lady read in Genesis um, once she, uh, she talked about um, God creating man, male and female, right? But then how many of you know that when God created Adam, it was chapter two? Yeah. It's God, God created Adam from the dust of the earth in chapter two, but he created male and female in chapter one. Right. So like, wait a minute, when, 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 when was man created? Man, the, the spirit of the man. God is what? spirit yeah. and if he created you in his image and his likeness he first created you as spirit. spirit so he created you as spirit first but then in chapter 2 in verse 4 it says this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens before yeah. uh, before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown for the Lord had not caused it to rain yeah. on the earth and here it is there was no man to what till yeah. the ground then he created man from the dust of the earth. So why did he create man from the dust of the earth? To till the ground. You were designed with the purpose to work. So whether they bounce back right now or whether they bounce back a year from now, they're going to bounce back because they're designed to it to, yeah. to do so. You can't help but do it. Yes, so good. But here's what Proverbs says about it. 26, Proverbs 26, 14. It says, <laughs> as a door, I'm reading from the, the Passion Translation, I love it. It says, as a door is hinged to the wall, so is the lazy man, uh, so, so the lazy man keeps turning over hinged yeah. to his bed. And then it says in verse 15, there are some people so lazy they won't even work to feed themselves. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So, so, so look. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. He right. He yeah. is right. He won't even work to feed himself. To feed himself. So how you going to eat, sir? Work is your responsibility. Ladies, y'all listening. There it is right there. Man don't work. There it is right there. Tilling the ground is what the man was designed to do. That's what he was designed to do. So look, now let me help you women. Don't get upset when you complain to your husband or your significant other and they always got an answer to how to fix it. We're, we're, we're designed to till ground. And so all we, what we're always looking for are solutions. And so what you got to do instead is help us help you. Let us know because women don't always want you to fix it. Sometimes they just want to hear. They want you to hear. Listen. They want you to sympathize. They want you to cry when they cry. They want you to be happy when they're happy. They just, just want hug you us. to be there. Just hug embrace them. us. And right. Tell us it's going to be okay. And it will. Just want to, don't want but you to touch us. let me get on us. out of here. But, but look, y'all, seriously. That's what they, sometimes, man, they don't want us to fix it. So we gotta in those moments we gotta we gotta we gotta calm down we gotta suppress who we are desiring and wired to be. Wait wait wait, that's why it's important to know what intimacy needs. That's why it's important. You gotta know what needs to be filled yes. in the moment. The last one that I have for you is men have a responsibility of managing pressure. Oh God. Men have the responsibility of managing pressure. Somebody say pressure. Pressure. As men, we deal with a lot of pressure. It doesn't matter which way you turn, which way you go, there is pressure. And, and, and that pressure is something that will never be un fully understood by women. Yes. Men, I need y'all to understand this. But I need also women to understand that, that we deal with pressure. There's a pressure to perform. Right. We just talked about um, man dreaming and having a vision. Right. Decisions and direction. That's pressure. Adam dealt with pressure even as 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 he was contending with Eve. That was like, hey, taste this. It was pressure. There's pressure to be pure. Right. In a world that's always looking at body count. You know, it's not the popular thing to say, yeah, I'm abstaining. But there's pressure to, to remain and be pure. Even let's look at, let's look at David. David. David was a man in pursuit, only not in the area of passion. Y'all quiet. Y'all quiet. Because, because, because while David was married and while David was supposed to be in battle, David decided to have fun with Bathsheba. Right. But at the same time, David was a man after God's own heart. So David was always in pursuit, but however, he, he needed to get his passions under control. Yes. Men, you're always under pressure, even in the area of passion. Yes. Right? Third, uh, the third one is we're under pressure to provide. We got to provide. We just talked about the lazy man and the working man. And then the last but not least, there's a pressure to present, to be, I'm sorry, a pressure to be present. Right. We gotta, we, we, we gotta be present. We gotta, we gotta listen. We gotta hear. We gotta provide. We gotta make sure that the lights are on. But at the same time, we gotta sit down and listen. At the same time, we gotta understand the needs. And at the same time, we gotta be able to sense not only what is spoken, but what's unspoken. Unspoken, yes. The only way you're gonna be able to identify what's unspoken is when you're present. Yeah. Because the majority of communication is unspoken. Words only account for 7%. Yet that's the only thing we respond to. Right. Right. So we're missing the whole conversation because they haven't parted their lips. Oh, but we feel it when it's cold when we walk in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So those are the things that I have, I have for the men. Was that helpful men? Was that helpful women? 
Can you give God glory for that? So ladies, even though men un operate under pressure, there is a place for us as wives or if God has called you to be in relationship to that man, there is a way that we can um, help eliminate some of the pressure, right? We can be that safe place. And so let that be our goal this year as married women and women who are pursuing marriage to be that place of rest, that place of safety, and he don't go lay in the lap of Delilah. Come on. She's still dropping. Come on. Let's make sure that we stay in our position and we be that place of rest. That way look, the, the fake one don't have to come and look like something that he wants. It was just a, a lookalike, but it wasn't the real thing. Somebody lift your hands and say, Father, Father this, year, this year, my life, my life will, be will be better in relationships. in relationships. Come on, just think about that. Let that sink in. I will be better in every relationship, no matter what, whether it's romantic or marriage or just regular friendships. This year, my life will be better.